Hey guys, how's it going? Just here making this video. Last video of uh, part 10 of the whole series. I don't even know what this is, but God is good. All we have to do is just be obedient to what he places on our hearts and he'll do the rest. I had no idea that this was going to play out the way that it did. And the ending up being such a huge testimony. You know, so testimonies are not meant. Te the definition of a testimony is showing the goodness of God. Showing that God is real. Showing how God intervenes in areas that a normal doctor or physician can't. And a testimony is not for our entertainment. A testimony is to show how real God is and to push people closer to the Lord, to him, so that way they may find this peace and this everlasting joy. So I'm going to invite my friend, a round of applause, woo, um, Andy, to just share some of his experiences and allow us to know exactly maybe his experience, how he felt, what was going on. And maybe the Lord allow me to ask him some questions and just let the Lord lead. But before we get going, I'm just going to say a prayer right now, okay? Uh, Andy's right here if you want to join me. God bless, God bless. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so, um, Father God, we come before you, Lord, and we thank you, Father. We thank you for everything you're doing, Lord. We thank you for what you did in Andy's life, Ashvin's life, Father God, and just how you move, Lord. How you consider just the smallest things in life, which seem so big to us, Lord. And we pray that you keep moving in a mighty way, Lord. We pray if there's anybody here, Lord, that needs your healings as well too, Father God. That you pray for them, that you comfort them, that you heal them, that you exalt them, Father God. That you take them from where they are and help them wherever area that they need, Father God. And maybe wherever placement that they might need, oh Lord. We love you, Father, and we believe that you can do anything, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, 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 and amen. amen, amen. So, Andy, um, so how, how how was it? How was the whole experience? Uh, yeah, the God saved my life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, like really, I would see you Monday at the hospital. I was so happy and cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't remember Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You didn't remember? Nothing. Yeah, I was in the yeah, hospital yeah. Uh, Friday and Saturday. Yeah. I was there by his side the whole time, but when he finally woke up, uh, he was like, he didn't realize I was there the whole time. And uh, what else? What else? What, what's going on? Yeah, what just got saved my life. <laughs> He's like, I'm just... I wake just... up like after three days. <laughs> Thanks, God. Well, he was in uh, life support uh, the first day at... And what well, the night time, and then the the first day he was in life support the full day. The second day is when he woke up. The first day in the morning we prayed for him. The second day is when he woke up. The third day uh, he was up. The second day, the third day they took the tubes out. But by the third day he even forgot the second day when he was up. And I I was there and he was writing on the paper. He he couldn't remember anything. Nothing. All he knew is that God saved his life yeah. and that. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> so God does tremendous things, guys. We want to just encourage you guys that um, just that's what we're here for. A testimony is not something for our entertainment. A testimony is something to just show how real God is. A testimony is meant to be shared all around. Matter of fact, a lot of people don't know that we're supposed to not only be having at least one testimony a day, but multiple testimonies every day and yeah. the way that that happens is is that whatever gifts that you have as you go on your daily routine you just exalt those gifts you just share those gifts with others maybe it might be hospitality maybe it might be cleaning maybe it might be serving maybe it might be singing maybe you're just randomly singing on a bus stop wow you sing well and then you just share jesus with people these are testimonies because jesus said i'm about my father's business and when you're about your father's business, he allows you to become super sensitive to what's going on in life. So, Andy, um, so before when that day happened, because I have I want to add some stuff too. Okay, you came in the house mm -hmm. and then 
I can't breathe. You couldn't breathe, no, right? Yeah. But it, but it wasn't as obvious though. It was kind of like your voice was a lot deeper though. Yeah. And then still we, is bad too, but uh, way better. Way better. Way better, right? Yeah. And so, but the thing is, is that when you came in, you can breathe, but you can just feel like, like there was like some struggle there, yeah. right? And how the Lord ended up using both of us. Yeah. yeah. He brought you and. Take, you take me like right time at the hospital. Yeah, th he brought it here a lot because he see he knows what's going on in Andy's life. For the past couple months, Andy's been Bible studies every morning. Not only going to like one church a week or maybe two to receive, you know, to get help or whatever it is, or food or serve a little. He's been going to over five churches a week, serving, receiving, serving in all these churches. So the Lord knows what's going on with Andy. He allowed Andy to make it to the house. We yeah. noticed that you were having some breathing yeah. problems, but it wasn't as severe because we were like, oh, let's get some halls. Let's get some tea. Yeah. You know, there was some, we knew there was some kind of struggle going on there. And then next thing you know, I told him, well, we could take you to the hospital. He said, well, we'll give it a minute. Give it a minute. It wasn't even less than 30 seconds later. The, now, this is where the Lord used me. I sit down. I open my Bible, right? Yeah. I don't even think I read two words. And the Lord told me take him to the hospital. And I was like, I closed the Bible real quick. And I'm like, you're going to the hospital. And what you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was like, yes, thank you, please. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, please. And so it, 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 that's why I was trying to tell him it's not me. It, this is all the Lord. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of people know that I'm like, man, everywhere I go, I preach everywhere I go. I evangelize everywhere I go. I'm teaching like you name it. Sometimes people say, oh, Lewis, you're a mess. Like you're like too much sometimes. And I'm like, well, you know what? Jesus was too much because everywhere that Jesus went, they knew he was Jesus. Everywhere Jesus went, it was like a trail of some kind of miracles happening. And Jesus said that you'll do greater things as I. And he said, follow me and I'm going to be revealing all this stuff to you and do what I do, basically. And Paul said, I wish you would be like me. You know what I mean? So then, so just because I, I do all of that doesn't mean that the Lord can not use you. Because I remember there was a time where I wasn't reading my Bible as much because I was just getting into it. And the Lord used me another time. It was like, get up, check in the back. And I was able to help one of uh, my neighbors that was in need. And she was in need and the Lord said, get up. And I'm like, but it, but it, but it's Catherine. She's doing her arts and crafts. She's always back there. Like, and the third time I was like, get up. And I felt like he picked me up out of the chair and I'm, I'm looking at this Bible and I'm looking at my chair and I'm looking at this Bible and I'm like, what just happened? And I go to the back, I go in the room, I look out the window and I said, what Lord? I'm like, she's just doing her arts and, and crafts. Like I said, but I know you called me here for a reason. So I'm looking out the windows, looking left. And when I looked right, I was like, oh, I seen what was going to happen. Somebody was there and they were going to harm her, you know, whether it be on purpose, on accident. They don't know what they're doing. Well, maybe just their anger and, and just people not not even knowing how the devil can use somebody and in, in, in a negative, horrible way. And so I caught it in time before and she needed the help and I was like wow and that's when I wasn't even in my bible crazy so just just pray to the lord exalt him tell him you love him tell him you want to be used by him and just be sensitive maybe talk to some pastors and ask them you know I would love for the lord to use me I know he has a big calling on my life and then can you please just guide me in the direction so that way I can be used. I know um, Chicago Tabernacle does it. I know Anthem Church is a good church. I know in Florida, Christ Image is a great church. I know uh, the church where Todd White goes to, that's a great church. You could look it up and Google it. They teach you there, heart and love. They teach you this stuff and how to do it and really walk as Jesus walked and, and taught as Jesus taught. And just, he can use anybody. So in that moment, when I was just sitting there, I opened my Bible and I was like in Matthew, and it was like two words, do, do, and I was like, take them. I was like, let's go. And he and you were like, thank you, yes, yeah. yes, let's go. Yeah. And immediately, right when you get to the hospital, they admit you, right? Yeah. They admit him. And 
right after that, did it mean the emergency? He was in the emergency room. Yeah. See, God knows what's going on in people's lives. Those who are trying to serve him, those who are trying to work with him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And those who are trying to seek. And he's been seeking hard, especially under my roof. It's hard for the past two months. Mm -hmm. And the Lord allowed him to come home just at the right time for us to try to figure something out. Just at the right time when I sit down, take him to the hospital. Just at the right time, he right before he could have actually died. And all the doctors were saying that he was not going to make it. Mm -hmm. All the doctors were so scared to tell me, oh, well, he could make it and... And I have it in the other videos. And when he finally made it, then all the doctors were comfortable. Yeah. And they were saying like, no, you, you almost died. It was a big chance that you weren't going to make it. And I told them how we had all these churches just praying for him and possibly thousands of people just praying for him. And so yeah. the doctor's like, yeah, yeah. You know, I believe that that was it. So it's a big testimony, powerful testimony. And I'm pretty sure that Andy's grateful. I'm really grateful. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe how have your days been afterwards? Yeah, now like I feel a little better. My, still is my voice is not really good, but it's still better. Yeah, I mm -hmm. noticed that you have like a lot of energy yeah. too. Yeah. I noticed that you're very happy. Yeah. I noticed that like you have When this... you come Monday morning, <laughs> I was so happy, you know that. <laughs> and I was crying. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And and I noticed that um as the days too pass yeah. that you just I have this yeah. calmness on you. You're yeah. very calm. I didn't remember anything. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I didn't know that. <laughs> I just was thinking like I'm dying. Yeah. 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 I remember the, the same thing like nurse and doctor told me too. You Amen. are lucky. Amen. So God save your life. And I was and I remember the part where when I walked in like he couldn't talk and he would be like, go try to do prayer hands. But the they have to have them on restraints because a lot of people, they wake up, they don't know where they're at. They're trying to pull the yeah. life support off. So they have to put you in restraints. So every time he'll go like this and I'm like, I know he's trying to say, God bless you. But then when they finally had the, the life support off, he was literally not breathing on his own. And they had the life support off. They had the restraints and he was awake. I remember the first thing he said in the video, he was like, thank you for my life, sir. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like you can just tell, like, it wasn't me, first of all. And this is what happens when you're just obedient to the Lord. I was just obedient to the Lord. And it wasn't me, first of all. And second of all, you can just see the, the just appreciation of life in that very moment at its highest potential. Thank you for my life, sir. And it was just like, thank you for my life. And I'm like, no, no, it wasn't me. Whoa, and I got a whole video pointing to the Bible. I put the Bible on my chest. No, this point. If you're going to say me, make sure you point to the Bible because it was him yeah. and we we're laughing. We we're having a good time. And, um, and, 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 and just knowing that, you know, it, it wasn't me, you know, and, and just how, how wonderful God is and how much wonderful God listens to, to people that, that pray for him. And the Bible says, especially to those that serve him, to those that love him to those that apply his word, to those that do his work. You know what I mean? God could answer all kinds of prayers. But when you have somebody that's fully, faithfully committed, or even thousands of people fully, faithfully committed, and they come together and they pray, oh man, now the rest is up to him because we're doing all that we can do. And if the person is here or not, we trust them. But the Lord blessed us with this. And so... One thing I wanted to share with, with you, Andy, mm -hmm. and everybody else is that that moment where he said, thank you mm -hmm. for my life. So it was so genuine. It was so, so, so severe, so, so robust, so deep, so powerful. Right. Yeah. But this is the thing. The Bible says that you are uh, reading the word of God. Right. Can be like a man looking in the mirror. And as soon as he turns away from the mirror. He forgets how he looks. A person looking in the mirror, as soon as they turn away, they forget how you look. It's so easy to forget how God can 
uh, how many times he's used you, how many times he's intervened in your life, how many times he's drawn you in, how many times he was there or by other people or hearing miraculous testimonies like this, even for my brother Ashvin right here, you know, you can, your life can be saved a hundredfold. You're like, oh my goodness, thank you, Lord. Um, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to do this. And then me, I could be like, oh, thank you, Lord. You did this miracle and this and that. But the Bible talks about that. If you're not diligently seeking and seeking and seeking and really know that God is real and running after this with well, all of your might, like I said in one of my other videos, you can have people in the churches for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years and see no movement. Yeah. And then you can have some 15 year old boy or girl locked up in their room, just in their word, in their word, in their word, storming heaven, in their word, learning, learning, learning. God completely changes them and then uses them and then exalts them. And you're like, well, why him? Well, why her? And that's what makes a difference. It's okay to lock yourself up in the room like a hermit. You're not going to be in the room your whole life. I remember, you know, even some of my friends and even myself, when things weren't going right, I would lock myself up in the room for months at a time, one, two, three months at a time in the word, in the Bible, because I knew that God had something more for me. I knew it because I would see so many testimonies. And even with all of that, and even with the testimonies and the different ways that God powerfully used me in my life, I would be there in the mirror. Wow, it's amazing. And then it would be so easy to forget and walk away. But one thing I want to share with you guys uh, before we go is that in order to not forget when you walk away, all of your mind, all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your flesh has to be in him the way you walk. The way you talk, the way you carry yourself, the way you you present yourself, the way you it, it all has to reflect him. And you can do all of that stuff and God's not in your mind and you're not going to get nowhere. But if you do all of that stuff, Lord, I want to represent you well. I want to be the loving Jesus that walked around and he was so loving. And, and a lot of his healing was just in the beautiful sound of his voice. His voice was so beautiful or so powerful or so, so anointed because there was so much truth inside of him. Lord, fill me up with your truth. So much truth that I overflow and I can't have any more inside of me. And just when I think I can't have any more inside of me, you fill me up more, Lord. You fill me up more. So I want to leave you guys with that, you know, yeah. and Andy, maybe uh, if there's anything else or um, anything yeah. comes to your mind or anything you're thinking no. of. Just thanks God. And thank you. Love you, brother. Love you too. I know you love me. Yeah. I know I love, I knew he loved me before he went to the hospital. Yeah. And I think he knew I loved yeah. him before he went to the hospital. Yeah. What God did was he brought us like this together yeah. really tight. And God said, look, you guys thought you were tight. Yeah, because we brother here. Yeah, you thought you were tight because you had me in the Bible studies every morning and in the word and all the churches. He's like, but I'm going to show you what tight is yeah. and use something so big. And when I came in the hospital and he had the life support the second day when he was kind of up, I said, Andy, don't try to talk. Don't worry. Just trust God. Even he's using this moment right now. And he was like, OK. And he just went back and he was just relaxing, just. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you see how wonderful God is in having them on your tongue and in your words and in your mind? It's powerful. The Bible says that it can create these mountains and destroy the mountains and it can start fires or it can put out fires just all with the love of the Lord. So we're going to leave you there. We love you guys. This is the last video. Surprise. We're good. God is good. And God's going to use us in great ways. I know God's going to use him in great ways. Yeah. And uh, by the next time you see him, I don't know, maybe he might try to intervene in one of my videos one of these days. <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, Lewis, oh, here we go. How's it going, guys? He pops in, just sticks his head in a video. I'm like, okay, okay, Andy, I'm doing a video. But that would be quite all right. Because that just the excitement of the Lord, just the joy of the Lord that just comes in and just changes the mold. That just, just, it's creating so much iron in him. And I know he's going to be sharpening me too. We're going to be sharpening each other. God's doing such a great move here. Even with the men that um, he's allowed me to have and serve and help. And just even all over the city of Chicago. 
So I know I'm sharing all of these testimonies off camera. Now, it would be wonderful, beautiful, super nice if you would share these testimonies and any other testimony you come across with the people around you on your phone, on your text messages, on your Facebook, on your YouTube, share, like. I got the comments off because you don't need no comments. You know what I mean? It's not for none of that, but you can share. You know, share, 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 share. If you have any prayer requests, you know, uh, please send them in, you know, um, for the YouTube channel. You know, my Facebook is Louis Barrera, L-U-I-S-B-A-R-R-E-R-A. Louis Barrera, that's my Facebook. If your page is absolutely clean, I will accept you. Absolutely, perfectly clean, all of the Lord, I will accept you. If it's a little bit and I see, I'm sorry, I can't accept you. I still love you. You can follow or something or go to the YouTube channel. Uh, same thing, Louis Barrera, L-U-I-S-B-A-R-R-E-R-A. -R -R -E -R you can type in after that on the YouTube uh, bar, what is your exile or something. I have so many different uh, preaching, sermons, evangelizing, teaching, you name it. And uh, yeah, and tomorrow I'll probably just get back into teaching, reading out the Bible and then just going back to just teaching and just seeing however else the Lord uh, is going to use me. I know tonight, let's see what happens. You know, he might use me tonight like my other videos. I share my other videos that just one o'clock, two o'clock is pulling me out of the bed, doing all kinds of stuff, going downstairs, strangers hugging in the middle of the night because I'll find somebody. The Lord had me, uh, was it last week? Pull, well, he pulls me out of bed almost every night, like every night, like long nights, like helping Andy you know, 10 hours in a hospital and then trying to do these videos in the morning and then sending them so many hours and then being there for Andy, evangelizing all through the hospital and then being so tired, coming back home, taking a shower in the word, no choice but to go to sleep. He knows I need my rest. So then those nights he didn't really, he didn't get me up through the night. But on nights like from now on and all the weeks before, like just last week, for example, it's every night, but last week, for example, um, I was like, Lord, where do I go now? Because it was already two different people I talked to, miraculous, just hugging in the night, strangers. And I seen down the street, and I seen lights flashing on the main avenue. And I was like, do I go that way? And I was like, okay. And when I started going, he was like, slow down. And I was like, okay. And then next thing you know, um, I'm walking like a snail. What would take me like two minutes to get to the street, it took me like almost 20 minutes, if not more, because by the time I get halfway to the middle of the block, it took me like four or five minutes. When I got to the middle of the block, I evangelized to a man and he was like, wow, thank you so much. This man, thank you. And as I kept going, I took another 10 feet and the Lord was like, stop. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? I'm looking around, try to look through like the side of the houses or around the houses. Okay, somebody going to come out. And then I look to the left. Okay. And I see a guy. And he's in a little car, a little red sedan, a little car. And I open up, um, uh, no, he opens up. He has his window open and he's kind of leaning back. So I go to the uh, the edge of the street because I'm the type of guy, like God says, obey the laws. Like, you're not going to catch me jaywalking. I'll go all the way to the corner and walk around and come back. I don't care if people get so mad at me. I don't care. I want to be fully used by the Lord. He says, obey the laws. I want to be fully used by him in every way. Like he said in the Bible, Jesus said in the Bible, oh, Jesus, and what should we do with our tithes? Should we not pay Caesar or whatever it is? He said, look at the coin. And he goes, what picture is it on there? And they're like, yeah, you know, it's Caesar. And he's like, what belongs to Caesar goes to Caesar. What belongs to God goes to God. So he's letting you know. So even with money that um, I will get from like a side job and it's cash, I'll put in my bank account. And I put it through and I don't let, and I, I, I'm open and open and honest fully with everything. And, um, some people try to say, oh no, well, you don't have to let them know because the government's corrupt and this and that. You know what? That's in God's hands. He's going to take care of them. I want him to take care of me because of the condition of the heart. He's going to excel me and multiply me because of the condition of my heart. We are the individuals that if we live just, he will do everything right for us. And there'll be suffering and persecution and all that stuff, but we have everlasting joy through all of it. The Bible also says unto the sword, having faith and hope, faith and joy. That means even unto death, you're like, they're just, you're, you're happy. You don't care. So, um, um, cause you know, he's real. So I'm there and I look, I see this guy in this four door sedan. He's leaning back and I'm like, 
is that that's him, Lord. So instead of going around, I said, I went to the edge of the street and I started talking to him from across the street. Hey, I just want to let you know that God loves you. He has a big plan for you and this and that. He opens his door and he's listening to music and he's on his phone. He's like, oh, really? And then I'm like, yes, he loves you and he has a big plan for you. And he's even putting people in your life and this and that to show you about God and draw you closer. And he's like, well, what else do you know? And I'm like, yo, whoa. I'm like, this is not some kind of oracle. You know what I mean? I said, I'm just going as I'm led what he's telling me. And what he's telling me right now is that he loves you. He wants to use you and he wants to help you with your problems. There's some stuff going on in your home and he wants you to know that, 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 he, that he loves you and he has a big plan for you. And he's sending people in your path to help you find him and draw close to him. But like, there, there's like a struggle. There's a resistance there. And he came up and he's like, how do you know this stuff? And he started like wanting to cry. And I'm like, man, I said, you're, 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 you're in a, intermeddling with a divine encounter right now. These are called divine intercounters, divine encounters. And he's intercounting you right now. He's counting you. And he's like, what are you, what's going on? I said, the Lord uses me through the night. He wakes me up and finds random people. You name it. Uh, alcohol, drugs, uh, uh, depression, crying, bus stop, just a mess about to just, you name it, suicide, you name it. And right when I get there, he uses me and his power comes in and changes everything. And then they're okay. It's called like strangers hugging in the night. And next thing you know, they're hugging me and they're crying and this and that. And I said, I said, the Lord is telling me, he's like, I know. Especially about the part when I said that God is bringing people in your life and he's using the people around you to do it. And he said, yeah, all of it, what you're saying is true. But my wife just reached out to the pastor and he's coming over to stay over to help me to find the Lord. Pastor's going to come over and stay over his house. What pastors do that? You know what I mean? Like pastors that really love, that have this special insight. You have all these beautiful pastors. They have all these gifts. They do all this stuff, right? And the whole body of Christ have different gifts, right? So you, you focalize that as like the members in the body, on in the pews or in the seats, right? But that goes for pastors too. Because all the pastors all over the city of Chicago, all over the states, all over the world, those are bodies too. And we're tied to these, your bodies, the bodies that are in the seats, but we're also tied to together in a different way. So the Lord used is different pastors for different things. We are different body parts, the Bible says. And so just because you, 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 you have a pastor that doesn't really do that, and then you have a pastor that does that, that doesn't mean, no, they're both exalting the Lord. They're both doing major parts and it's both going to come together. So, and he, next thing you know, he was like, he leaned on me. He was hugging me and hugging me and hugging. This man was big. And he was ended up working for the city. I thought he lived there. And he ended up working for the city and he had to end up going and he went and he went, he went down the street on the main avenue and started working for the city. And he took that with him. The Lord allowed me to chase after him to tell him a couple more things. He was like, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So don't think that the Lord cannot use you. And I'm, um, I'm not sorry that this video is lengthy. God's in control. So, um, don't think that the Lord can't use you. The Bible says that many are calling. Many kind of sounds like the word, like everybody. Many. Like a number that is so big. Like what really is the definition of many? There's no number on the word many. It's like, but few are chosen. Why are the few are chosen? Well, the ones that are chosen are the ones that are seeking and driving and diligency because believe it or not, everybody goes through pain in this earth. Everybody has so many testimonies of how many different encounters they had with the devil and so much pain of death, robbery, molestation, being shot, being uh, stabbed, going to prison, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 60 years, all of these different things, almost dying under deathbed. You name it. Just think of whatever traumatizing thing you've been through and you name it. And, and the thing is, is that the road is wide. And, 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 and so, so, so many people are going through so much pain. So many people are falling. 
and not really fully knowing all of the Lord. And also he's calling so many people. So that road is wide too. But few are chosen. The few are chosen is because it's the few that choose to surrender. The few that choose to give their all to the Lord and go to a good church and, and give their life to the Lord and read their Bible and study and decide to teach others the little bit that they know. Oh man, but I'm doing it all wrong. I guarantee you, if you do it little by little, you're going to get bigger, better, bigger. You're going to know more and more and more. You're going to be able to house more. You're going to have more of an artillery of verses and just more of, of an experience on saving and helping and, and being there for these people in these great, great dire times of need. I remember I've been doing this for almost like 10, 15 Okay, 25, I'm 35, I've been doing it before I was 25, like 18, you know, doing it all wrong. I remember when I was 18 years old, trying to preach to my mom and getting so frustrated because they're not listening because God's showing me all these mysteries and I'm over here cursing and, and dropping all kinds of foul language because I'm like, but you're not listening to me. And she's like, Louis, that's not God. I'm like, it is God. You just don't understand me. I'm just a kid. I don't really know how to talk. And, 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 and it's coming to me now. Like, yeah, I was just a kid. I didn't really know how to talk. And that's not God. I said, I know it's God. I said, because when I found something in my house that shouldn't have been there and his presence left off of me, and I'm going through the house trying to find it. And I finally find it and I throw it out in the alley. As soon as I throw it out in the alley, his presence come on me again. And it keeps revealing more and more to me. I'm trying to share with you what he's sharing with me. No, no, but you're cussing. That's not God. And I'm like, oh, forget this. And I leave. And as I'm going out the back door, I'm crying. And I'm crying. Lord, I know it's you. I'm not going to stop. I know it's you. I know it's you. My friends will find me behind the couch fasting, passed out, trying to stick bread in my mouth because I'm trying to kill my flesh. The Bible says that the land will be filled with milk and honey. So for two weeks, all I drank was this much milk with a little bit of honey in it. And the whole day, every day, and, 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 and I would just do my all to keep seeking the Lord. So as I'm leaving out the back door of my mother's house, I'm crying. And I said, Lord, it's you. And the, the thought of confusion came into my head because of the, my mother didn't know accidentally that it was not that the Lord was not speaking to me. The problem was, is the conflict of the language where me not being able to properly express it to her in a way in my adolescence where I don't get frustrated and then just get so mad and just start cussing because this is something so big. I need you to listen to me. So there was a, a conflict of a language barrier going on there. But I knew it was the Lord speaking to me. But the spirit of confusion tried to penetrate my mind. And as I'm going out the back door, the back door, and as soon as I'm about to get on the back porch, I'm like, Lord, I know it's you. I know it's you. It's you, right? And then I got mad. And I was like, as soon as I went out the back door to go on the porch and I got mad, I said, if it's you, you better show me right now or I'm done. I'm done. I'm never talking to you again. And as soon as I went out the back porch and I ended my uh, conversation with the Lord that yelling at him, <laughs> he doesn't care if you yell at him, just talk to him. And I seen straight down the back porch, the opening, a lightning bolt the size of a softball came down in front of me and it, it like shook everything and I was just like and I wasn't scared it was so loud that when that happened to me when I was a kid in Mexico that kind of loudness I was so terrified that I stood by the hotel and I didn't move for almost two hours I just stood there I stood there and I was so scared I was so traumatized and the same thing happened and I didn't have the Lord like that then. And the same thing happened, but in this manner, the Lord was with me already. But the spirit of doubt tried to come in. And I said, Lord, if it's you, you better tell me or I'm done. And, and it, I, I'm the last time I'm going to talk to you. And boom, a big lightning came down right in front of me, the size of a softball. And it grazed the side of my mom's car and it came down and smacked the floor. And, and like everything shook, but there was no fear. And I was like, whoa. And I looked back at my mom and I looked back at whoever else was there. I said, like Jesus said, Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. I'm not calling my mom dead. And Jesus said, follow me. That means sometimes like, you know, moving to another state. That means sometimes, 
not working so much in a severe job. That means sometimes making time for God. That means sometimes like maybe a pastor opened up a new church and any members there. So you leave from Chicago when you go to another state and you go help and serve, you know, you leave everybody behind to put the Lord first. So when I look back, I was like, oh, forget you guys. I said, it's me and you and I'm gone. And I left and I had a, a whole nother testimony about that of uh, shortly uh, after and all these different encounters where the Lord uses me uh, and uh, just in major ways. I remember going out that night, maybe like one o'clock in the morning, uh, two o'clock in the morning and getting caught in the alley and some guys, they pulled out a gun on me, but they didn't know that I was on like straight Jesus mode and I'm just full of the Holy Spirit and they're like, oh yeah. And they pulling guns out on me and I was like, yeah, I have a gun too. And they're like, oh yeah, well show us. And I was like, okay. And I went like this. I said, are you sure? They're like, yeah, show us. And they're ready to kill me in the alley. And I go out like this and I pull out my two fingers and I pull out slow. And I said, Jesus Christ, that's my gun. And I had my Bible, a little Bible. And I pulled my Bible. I said, these are my bullets. And they just lost their mind. They lost their mind. They said, oh my goodness, who is this guy? We need guys like this. Who is this guy? We need guys like this. This guy is so serious about the Lord that he's not scared. He's just out here. He said, this is my name, my name, my name. They gave me all their names. They told me the neighborhood that they were from. They told us, come to the neighborhood, like do what you did here. And then like they gave me the whole neighborhood, told everybody in the neighborhood about me, told them if they messed with me that <laughs> they're going to get beat up <laughs> and probably said it in other kind of ways. And then God moved through that whole neighborhood. So God wants to use you. And that's just one of thousands of testimonies that I have. And I just know that the Lord's gonna do something great. He's gonna provide finances. He's gonna provide resources. I was been provided some resources, little resources, you know what I mean? Especially for the guys, toiletries and shower stuff and toothpaste, all that stuff goes like 10 times faster now because there's more men here. But I know the Lord's gonna provide so much more resources. Maybe this camera won't be backwards anymore and my shirts that I represent won't say Jesus backwards or something like that, where he can continue to move and do a great way. So I encourage you guys, you know, whatever you can do, um, uh, to support, please support, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Lewis Barrera, uh, what is your exile? Or you can go part one and it'll take you to the testimony of, uh, Ashvin. And then, um, uh, like, set of the thumbs up, throw some hearts, make it all colorful. Uh, you can share, share on Facebook. You can share on, uh, uh, YouTube, sharing your text messages. You know, uh, they have these multi-messenger apps where it just, boom, your whole contact at one time you send and boom, it just shares a thousand text messages at one time. There's a lot of different ways you, you guys can help. Number one, you can pray for us. Pray, 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 and storm heaven that God can uh, do even greater things in the life of the men here and, um, and, and, and in my life as well, too that God will just open and pour open the floodgates of heaven on us and allow for uh, protection, safety, traveling mercies, blessings, more encounterments for him, more to speak to us more, for more people to be helped, saved, redeemed, restored, forgiven, healed. Like all that stuff happens, but just magnify it. And for finances to come in because Lord knows that bills still got to get paid and, and, and um, you know, people still need to be reached. So, uh, my name is Louis Barrera. I love you guys. And oh, and prayer requests. If you have any prayer requests, please, please, please send them in. I tell people all the time if you have any prayer requests and I write them down, I put them on pieces of paper. And every time I dig in my wallet, every time I dig in my wallet, I uh, uh, reset out. So, you guys could pray for the uh, salvation of Kevin Smith, Gabriella Silva. Um, something personal, it was nothing detailed, but pray for her too. And just, uh, if you have any prayer requests yourself, please send them in. You can send them in the comments of my Facebook, uh, in the comment section. And then, um, yeah. And if there's any other resources I can use and slowly but surely, uh, I will use those, but, uh, I do kind of need some help doing this. 
setting up the camera it's backwards i probably need to flip it the other way and then like maybe have somebody on this side camera helping and then um man maybe some some microphones some speakers some sounds some musicians some instruments some uh more bibles you know i have a lot of bibles at home they're like kind of beat up but some new bibles pamphlets tracks to pass out in the streets holy oil uh frankincense myrrh man we take it all we'll take it all whatever god puts on your heart and however God puts it in your heart to distribute this and share this on Facebook, maybe in your phone, your contacts, or sharing it on the YouTube, uh, subscribing, hitting notification links, all of the above. Um, because God's doing a big movement right now. And 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 we're water walking. We're water walking right now. The, the bills is like three times over. You know, other bills need to be paid too. Uh, we have a vehicle that we're getting around and we're just, we're water walking. So... Any little money that I get goes to the insurance on the vehicle and for uh, the phone to continue this so we can do this on the phone and then for the vehicle so we can keep going around and serving people and being used by God and then um, going to these multiple churches. So this is the last video. I hope you guys enjoyed, you know, me and Ashvin collabing right here through his healing, through his testimony, sharing everything that we shared in this video and everything else that came in this video. So I want to pray for you guys. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the people that are watching this video right now, Lord. I pray that you cover them, Lord. I pray that you cover their mind, Father God. I pray that you cover their heart, Lord. And I pray that you cover their spirit, Father God. That you protect them, Lord, from any lie that the enemy is trying to interlude into their minds, Father God. I pray that you allow that your word to speak mightier whenever something or the devil, the devil or the enemy is trying to come in and destroy them, Father God. I pray for healing right now, Father God. If anybody needs any type of healing, any type of restoration, any type of, of forgiveness, any type of redemption, Father God, to let them know that no matter what they might have done or whatever they were involved in, or no matter how bad they strayed or whatever mistakes they might have made, Father God, that they are forgiven and it is done. Your word said it, it said that it's thrown in the sea and it's thrown in the sea of forgetfulness to be remembered no more, Father God. So if any memory of it comes by, Lord, it's the devil, Father God, and we cast him out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We cast him out right now and we stomp on him, Father God. You said that we are above the angels, Lord, so we don't have to ask you to call your angels down, Father God. If we are above them, your word says that we can call on to the angels. We can send the angels. We can call on them for help. And you know what? Last time I heard, Father God, that the devil was a fallen angel. So if we're above the angels, then we're really above the devil. So we're giving him an eviction notice right now. We're stomping on his head right now. Anything that the enemy's trying to do to bring destruction, to remind you of your past, to remind you of things you might have messed up, to remind you that it, that to try to remind you that of a lie that is too late, to try to remind you of something that is not true, saying that it's too late, you're too old, you can't be used. You're done for. You might as well watch TV all day, hang in the towel, do nothing. That's a lie. And we break that generational curse. We break that generational cycle trying to come in and defeat and destroy what these gifts that you have put in your children, Father God. You said that to seek you and follow you. You never said that there was a time limit, a stamp, a date, a retirement, anything. Dr. Charles Stanley, almost in his 90 years old, he's still up there on his chair preaching the word of God, sharper than two-edged sword. And Father God, there's no time date on you, Father God. There's no age limit on you, Father God. There's no ethnicity limit on you, Father God. But your only requirement is love, is love, is love, is love, Lord. To learn how you love, to learn how your son loved, to learn how the Holy Spirit comforts, Father God, and share that, Lord. That we are not to yell at each other. We are not to scream at each other. We are not to fight at each other. We are not to oppose our own opinions on each other, Father God. If it's not scripture, we're not trying to hear it. If it's not you, Father God, we're not trying to hear it. If it's not the Holy Spirit, Father God, we're not trying to hear it. If it has to do with mowing the grass, and if it's not, can you mow the grass? Uh, we're not trying to hear it, Father God. Yes, we'll mow the grass. Yes, no problem. But as far as the color of the grass for an hour and a half, nope. If it's not the Lord, we're not trying to hear it. Ask us to do something, but regular just words that have nothing to do with the Lord, we're not trying to hear it. 
And that, Father God, is the way to you, Father God. You said all of you in us and all of us seeking you, Father God. John the Baptist says that if it has nothing to do with Christ, if it has nothing to do with you, I don't want to know nothing about nothing but Jesus and our Lord. Nothing about nothing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. You have a wonderful, beautiful day. God bless you. I know he's going to use you in mighty ways. And pay attention to how the in the littlest things, the little opportunities to glorify him with your children, with your parents, with your siblings, with your co-workers, with all of the above. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen, and God bless you.